and he is uh, running Retrocat Media, which is a video production firm um, up in Fayetteville. I met Lucas in Conway when we were, he was a student at UCA when I was a student at Hendrix. Um, it's been awesome to see how he has developed his business up in Fayetteville. He was in the ARC Challenge uh, last summer, um, the accelerator program here, and um, he is going to be talking about Retrocrat. I don't know where he is. Right behind He's you. Behind. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Do you want those down? To what? Do you want the lights down? Yeah. Cool. Let's go for that. Got some video. There you go. Don't judge me on using PowerPoint from 2007. <laughs> it's all I had on this thing. Okay. So, the cord. Yeah, is that right? I can test and see if the audio is. Here, let me just. I'm going to test the audio before we get too far into it. It's not okay, we're good. <laughs> Don't ask questions. Okay, so like I said, my name is Lucas Deem. For those of you that have trouble with names, it's Lucas with a K. I don't know. I struggle with names, so I need a little thing like that. Uh, like you said, also, I'm the owner of Retro Cat Media. I started this about a year ago. We're a media production company focusing on photo and video for businesses. I'll get more into that after I introduce myself a little bit. Um, I'm from Conway, Arkansas. I grew up there. There's me on the drum line being a band nerd. Woo! Go Wampus Cats. Yeah, so I got my first camera when I was about 15, and uh, I was no prodigy. Pretty sure that's not how you use that thing. But uh, I got better. I stuck with it. Started shooting some senior portraits for friends, making a little bit of, I mean, like 60 bucks a senior portrait session. Just stuff to make a little bit of cash. It wasn't anything serious, but uh, I really liked it. Got some business experience early on. I went on to UCA. Uh, there I studied not business, not finance, not marketing, not accounting like dad would have preferred. Sorry about that. I ended up studying a bunch of liberal arts. So <laughs> I studied sociology, French language studies, and uh, studio fine art. Um, after, UC well, towards the end of my time at UCA, I was shooting for the Echo. It was the, the school's news publication, so I kept my practice with my photography there. But uh, at the end of my time there, I had uh, gotten close with some friends who were starting with this new innovation entrepreneurship class. And uh, I thought it was really cool. They started telling me about it. And uh, my whole concept of business was completely changed. Before that point, business to me was very stiff, corporate, you know, traditional, and boring to me. It wasn't interesting to me. but I found out through this new way of thinking about entrepreneurship that it could be really creative and interesting. You could solve some really cool problems for the world and for people. So started brainstorming with these guys and we ended up coming up with some really neat app ideas. Well, we thought they were neat. And uh, we started submitting them to some business competitions. We had a couple failures, but we got really lucky, uh, got into the art challenge somehow. So that was really life changing for me. It was a pivotal moment in my career. Um, that's when it solidified what I really wanted to do, which was be an entrepreneur for the rest of my life. And uh, I gained more business knowledge in that time than I'd ever had in my life. It was a crash course. Highly recommend this program and supporting this program. I'm sure you've all heard about it. Um, also, all the networking that I would need. I mean, that's why I'm here today. So uh, after the ARC, the app wasn't bringing in the big bucks just yet. So I needed a way to make some money. And I decided, well, I've got these camera skills, so let's add this new business knowledge and put my media skills together and see what I get. Well, it came out with a cat with some shutter shades. So <laughs> that's what happened. Um, Retro Cat Media was started, like I said, about a year ago. Uh, we started doing some photography video. And like any photographer goes to, I did portraits. I did weddings. And I found that extremely boring. I love portraits, but weddings just, I'm not trying to do weddings. Too stressful, too much going on. Um, so I was wondering how can I still do this but not be completely bored out of my mind. And I realized that I was really interested in marketing and branding. So I combined the two. I switched from business to customer from business and to business to business. Um, and while doing that, I started producing videos and content for local brands. I realized that they needed social media content more than anything. I was making these full length videos and all of these nice photo sets for them. And they would be like, oh, can you condense that down so I can put it on Facebook? And I was like, oh, that's an insult. And then I was like, wait a minute. What if the, the social media content was the end product itself? So 
I kind of had an aha moment and was like, well, let's try that. Let's try this niche. No one's really producing custom content. People, about a year ago, Instagram added video, 15 second video clips for their photo sharing social media site. And people were taking full length videos, cutting them down and putting them into Instagram. Well, I decided let's make <laughs> custom videos that are 15 second longs for Instagram. So that's what I'm going to focus on with you today. But we all know that social media is important. But I believe that the content is just as important. Like Ron Burgundy always says, content is kind of a big deal. I don't know if he actually said that. I found that on the internet. <laughs> so this next section is going to be focusing on some of the videos I've produced for Instagram. And the first section will be on events. So we use these. It was the easiest to get into at first. Uh, these events had a little bit of a budget for media. And I said, well, let's do some kind of social media campaign focusing on Instagram videos. First one is going to be a fashion show we did. And then the next three are part of a really cool marketing experiment me and my friends conducted. We um, lined up an event with a club and decided to create a secret party and put this mystique around it and make everyone wonder what's going on. So we took about a week period of time where we dropped three or four videos in sequential order. Each video added a different amount of information about where the event was going to be, what's going on, who's, like, who's the DJ for the night. Uh, we got a couple thousand followers within just a couple of days. I could get you the real stats. I just don't have them today. I had trouble finding them. But it was really cool. It was packed. We couldn't fill the place. It was, it was awesome. So I'm going to show you that real quick. As long as I got my suit and tie, I won't leave it all on the floor tonight. And you got fixed up to the nines. Let me show you a good thing. All dressed up in black and white. And you're dressed in that dress I like. I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people. Confident that with your help, man will be what he was born to be, free and independent. Okay, so those are events. Um, like I said, that was, that was a really fun event. But uh, after that, um, we started working with products a little bit. Um, so this next section will be a couple product shots. And the purpose of them, uh, it's pretty obvious. It's more about kind of showing a product and its function while maintaining feel for the overall brand. <laughs> Okay, and then this last section are well, my personal favorite, what I call brand videos. And they don't necessarily market a specific product. They're not trying to sell you something. They're not trying to sell you an event. They're more so focused on just engaging the customer base or followers on Instagram. And um, maybe a musical artist or just you know a brick and mortar of some sort. As soon as you know and it's in your heart, you can feel it. And you know it's supposed to go down for you. It's supposed to go down for you. And whatever happens, happens for a reason. Okay, so in closing, we all know that social media is important by this point, 
but I think that that content that you post needs to be customized and reinforce your brand. And that's really what I've tried to focus on. I feel like I've really come a long way in the last year. I've had a lot of great for, uh, help from people in this area and specifically in this room. Uh, Jordan and Lee have been a great help to me. And um, I just, uh, you know, I'm supposed to ask for help. I guess I should do that after the Q&A though. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I've got that coming though. I've got points for that. Great. So do we have any questions for Lucas? Walter Burgess with Power Technology. Uh, how did you decide to set your pricing model and can you give us some insights to your pricing model? Yeah, so no one else prices out Instagram videos. So yeah, it was rough. I'm still actually going through that now. It's another thing that's on my list of things I need help with um, because I've really scared people way before. You know, they're like, I need an Instagram video. And I'm like, well, $100. And they're like, it's 15 seconds, you know? And it doesn't make sense to them. Well, I'm like, well, it takes me a good hour or so to put that together, just the edit, not including the shooting time. Um, one thing that works out great for me, though, is including it as a package. So I will still create that full feature product that's a minute to three minutes long. And then I can take all of that footage and cut it down in Instagrams. And I can usually cut some kind of deal on a, an amount of Instagrams. So uh, it seems like you're going to be jumping around a lot to new social media. There's going to be a new big thing in every year coming out, um, especially with video sharing. Mm -hmm. So are you, what's your kind of plan for that and your vision for that? Are you always looking for the next thing? Yeah, yeah. So I really got into the Instagram thing as mainly a marketing tool um, and then found that people wanted to buy them from me. And I was like, oh, that's fine with me. I'm not going to object. And uh, yeah, I'm ready to move on to the next platform. I've been looking a little bit at Vine, but I'm not real sure if that's going to suit my needs. And that train might be over anyway. It's kind of hard to keep up, as you guys all know. But it's not really, it's, I'm kind of in a weird place. It's do I focus on this Instagram stuff and the social media stuff, or do I focus on my full product and always have that new social media sharing content that I can custom cater? You know, like I was saying, the, I think the differentiator for a lot of what I do is that the content that I put on Instagram wasn't just cut out of a full video. It was actually re-edited to utilize that 15 seconds or whatever amount of time it may be in the future. Hey, good morning. Lynn Folks, my uncle's gourmet barbecue sauce. With your product, would, you, would I be suitable as a customer for you marketing my sauce through this media? Yeah, yeah, barbecue sauce. Absolutely. Sounds like a fun project to me. Let's, yeah, let's, let's do that. I'm always down for a barbecue, so. <laughs> okay, we've got one sale. Um, any more questions? <laughs> Woo! Eat that. Hi, Lou McAllister, uh, N8 Partners. A lot of the content, or at least some of the content, looks like other people's content as well. What do you do about clearances and uh, uh, licensing and that sort of thing of other other folks' stuff? And that's part A and then part B. You're talking about uh, Vine and maybe Vine's over. Uh, you, have you considered Kick, which is, you know, uh, Instagram's two and a half times longer than Kick. So yeah, yeah, I haven't looked too much into Kick. Um, but for the first question is a little more difficult. Um, anything that's under 15 seconds, I, I, I'm assuming you're mostly talking about the music. Yeah. So the music. Uh, because it's such a short length, we haven't really ran into any problems. We looked into what Instagram says on their website and in their terms and policies. They really didn't specifically say anything about it. So, I mean, it's kind of a loophole that we've been playing with. We haven't had any problems. Uh, but, yeah, that's, that's kind of where we're at right now. It's, it's, I think that the, it's insignificant to them since it's so short. You can use, pretty sure, is it 30-second clips or 15 seconds? Somewhere in there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, somewhere in there. So, yeah. But also another part of that is we try to partner up with local musicians that we actually have. I shoot music videos too, so I cross-promote people. Be like, hey, I've got a video that would look good with your music in it, so why don't we just team up? Hi. Keenan Abner with uh, the Arkansas Fellowship and Sumo Tex. Um, so... I know you pretty well, and I know that you know you're always busy running around doing all these videos and stuff. Um, what what's kind of your plan moving forward for expansion or for new markets or you know people? You know what are you what are you looking? Because obviously it's it's getting to the point where you're you're blowing up pretty big, so you might need some help. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I've been talking to Lee a little bit about this, and uh, he's like, you know, you need interns. <laughs> Those sound useful. But um, I'm actually also looking at expanding into the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so um, I am looking at moving into the Little Rock market a little bit more. Fayetteville, while it is, yeah, Fayetteville, while it does have its funkiness, um, I, I haven't really found that the business owners are necessarily ready for it as much as the youth that live there are. You know, there's kind of a difference between the generations. For some reason, a lot of my business has been coming out of Little Rock. I think it's partly due to the connections that I've made in the area growing up around here. Um, and I just feel like Little Rock is a little bit more ready for my style. It's a little more edgy, a little more out there. And uh, yeah, I don't, and uh, you know, moving to Little Rock might be a thing I would do. I know that some people in this room would like that. <laughs> I think she's got a question. Thank you. Pam with East Coast Awakening. Are you partnered up with a advertising agency that maybe has, like if I wanted to send one of your media shots out in email, are you partnered with an advertising agency that can get it to all the right people for me? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about becoming my own advertising agency someday. So, yeah, I advertise it and I make it. <laughs> That's long term. Hi, I'm Doug, and do some mentoring here for AVC. It seems that um, you have a niche that really would work well with marketing um, and advertising agencies to outsource your channel to people. Uh, have you approached a number of the agencies here? Not yet. I, that's, I've got to do that, <laughs> according to both of well, you. Well, there are people in the room here that can really help with that. So, Great. So uh, reach out to us, and we'd look forward to doing that. We have time for a couple more questions. What? Don't kill me, Jordan. <laughs> no, uh, this is something I've actually been interested in just because you know, we're going to be working on projects together and I, I want to get in the mindset of what you're actually doing. So take, take us through um, the time that it takes to actually edit one of those clips because I, I know you talked about the longer stuff and then breaking it down in the clips But like how much time do you actually spend on doing that to make one Instagram? Yeah, one Instagram can be edited together. I would say between minimum 25 minutes, but more so towards the hour mark 45 minutes and I know I think we talked about it not too long ago about optimizing that flow I have been getting a lot better about it you know using uh, different I don't want to get too techy on you but nesting sequences and stuff like that you can really save a lot of time yeah but that's about how long it takes because we really want that to be the end product we don't want it to just be a clip that I stole out of part of another video I want it to be each second is utilized in a specific manner for a specific reason So when you're thinking about <clears throat> developing this business, there's obviously a scalability issue of you can only do as much time as you have. Um, yeah. How are you thinking about standardizing this process, or are you just not there yet with thinking about expansion? Yeah, so um, I have started contracting out employees um, occasionally when I just can't handle the work. Uh, and the best thing that seems to be working for me so far is that I stick with the editing, or if I get lucky and find a great editor, it's hard to find a good editor. You can find people who can shoot pretty good video, though. And really, the magic happens on the editing computer. So it's easy for the easiest way to deal with too much work is to have people go and shoot for me. Because a shoot doesn't only take the hour that you're actually shooting. It takes the three hours it took you to drive down to Little Rock from Fayetteville. And then it takes the three hours you drove back. You probably spend the night there. And that's how much time that I could have spent working on editing videos and really pumping content out. So yeah, first of all, just finding people to either edit for me or to do the video work itself. Great. Well, um, now, now's your chance. Oh, yeah. Um, if you got your prepared marks, what's the one thing that our community uh, can do for you to help advance your company? Okay, so like I said, I was no business major, so I could use help anywhere. If you see somewhere you could help me, please, I'm not too stubborn to take it. So I would appreciate anything. But if I had to choose two, um, 
like you guys you just mentioned I need some help preparing for potential growth in the near future I'd say within the next year um, taking on some more contract work or some more employees and uh, just getting ready for some scaling and then secondly would be uh, just connecting with brands who have cool stuff like cool I mean barbecue come on that's pretty sweet I'm down so yeah um, cool just find some cool brands for me that have cool stories that I could tell and have cool cool things to show and that could really meet their marketing needs through social media content or just video content in general great well let's uh, thank Lucas for speaking Thank you all for coming, and uh, please stick around and have a cup of coffee, and uh, Jordan wants to say something. Closing remarks. You guys hold tight. <laughs> all right, so thank, thank you again for coming out. Um, real quick, I just want to say another round of applause, or give another round of applause to all of our sponsors. Thank you. <laughs> That's the, the, Little, the Little Rock Chamber, the Arkansas Venture Center, uh, Design Matters, Web Jive, uh, and West Rock Coffee. Um, also want to announce a few events on the horizon. Um, so next week at One Million Cups, we're going to be um, hosting uh, Michael Eason of Passenger Baggage Express. Michael Eason also went through the art challenge um, in the same cohort with Lucas. Um, so they were able to spend some time together, and they know each other a little bit. And uh, Michael has an awesome story to, to share with us. And then also Easy Discovery Solutions. Um, I'm actually excited about this one because I don't know that much about them, but I know that um, it has everything to do with the discovery process um, for a legal suit or any type of legal matter. Um, so that'll be an exciting one. Um, also, um, outside of the context of One Million Cups, tonight we have, um, there's a hubbub uh, event that's hosted by the Arkansas, or the Arkansas Regional Innovation Center um, at the main li or the Layman Library, I think on Main Street, I think that's the right name of it. Um, that's tonight at 5.30. Um, and then also this week, we have a MongoDB uh, um, and a Python user group that will be here at the chamber from 5.30 to 7.30. Um, so those will be stacked on top of each other. Mongo will be the first, the first half of that. And then the Python user group will be the, the second half of that. So any coders or techies that are interested in coming to that on Thursday, um, we'll have stuff for you. And then also there's a Drupal meetup across the river at the joint at, um, simultaneously. So we apologize if you're into Drupal and uh, Python and Mongo at the same time. Um, you're going to have to pick or choose and pick which side of the river. But um, it's exciting that we have all that stuff going on. Um, also, um, we, um, we have a, a class here with the chamber for uh, chamber members. So if you're interested in a chamber membership, um, t come talk to me or one of the other chamber employees. There's an event called, um, uh, I think it's, <clears throat> it's, uh, some, it's like web, um, your web presence. And it's, it's really interesting. Uh, the company that's doing it is Waco Media. They actually own the Democrat Gazette. Um, and they, they walked me through what happens. And it was, it was really fascinating how they set up this thing and they walk people in essentially to a trap. When you walk in, you're going to be bombarded with all the things that they can find about you online. Um, and they're going to show you how to fix that online. So it's a really, really cool thing, um, really valuable in this day and age as well. So that's coming up. Check it out at the Chamber website. Also, the Venture Center is open for operations over here um, for startups that need space, mentoring, um, and all the programs that they provide. Um, we have desks and um, mentor sessions going on on this half of the building now. Um, check it out after One Million Cups. It's pretty cool. Um, David's been working out of there as well as some of our interns and a few other companies. Um, also, um, the pre-flight program that the Venture Center is going to be having is later this summer. starts June 30th. Um, look into that if, you're, if you have a startup idea that um, you're still working your full-time job and you need an opportunity that um, allows you to work and develop that out. Um, without actually jumping out and, and taking the risk of leaving your job, this program will help you get ready to make that leap. Um, so it'll be, be, be an awesome program. Um, does anybody have any other events while, while we're tied in? Any other events going on in the community? Awesome. So um, if you do have events, let me know. Um, we love to promote those types of things. And thank you for coming out. Um, awesome morning. Great presentation.